Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear friends, I pray you're all well. Okay, alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us. We, let's start Surah Al-Anfal, inshaAllah ta'ala, Al-Fatiha. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا ومنحنا يا ربنا علما وعملا قربا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وارض عنا يا كريم so, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we have the next surah. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so, yeah, it's Surah Al-Anfal. And the surah is <coughs> a Medinan surah. And it was revealed in the second year after the hijrah of the blessed prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um and it was revealed just after the battle of badr so let's just look at it. one of its names uh, is also surah al badr right uh, surah al badr as some of the sahaba called it but it's generally in the masahif and in the copies of the quran you'll find it's referred to as surah al anfal anfal plural of nafal which is an extra, a ziyada, something above uh, and beyond another matter. And so it, Anfal refers to the spoils of war. And so this, they were forbidden for prophets before our messenger Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And like, li al ghanaim, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the spoils of war have been made permissible, permissible for me. And they were not permissible for any other prophet before him. Yes. <coughs> the previous prophets did uh, have military campaigns at times and uh, if they captured the enemy or if they defeated the enemy anything that was taken from them they weren't allowed to benefit from it but that was made permissible for the Muslims but Surah Al-Anfal uh, let's talk about its theme and that makes the title clear it's Ziyadah as I said it's an ex uh, extra the Sahaba after the Battle of Badr had a dispute and the dispute was over who gets what regarding the Anfal. And uh, so what we have, we've got a number of narrations. Um, there's one by, for example, uh, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas. Um, he has a narration where um, Allah, his brother had been killed. Uh, and uh, you know by the, by the uh, by the disbelievers of Mecca. So Sayyidina Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, um, the narrations that he went and uh, he, he killed someone and he took his sword after killing him and he liked it and he asked the Messenger of Allah, you know, if he could keep it. And then the Messenger of Allah, uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said, you know, it's not his to give. So because uh, the, the spoils of war were meant to uh, a, a, a split amongst all, all of the the army. Uh, and then some of the Sahaba were uh, disputing, you know, they're arguing over it. Uh, what happened is some of the Sahaba said that uh, some of the Sahaba chased the enemy away. Uh, so they said they have a share in it, right? Others, after the battle, spent their time collecting it all and putting it all in one place. So they, they were kind of claiming it, this is ours, we collected it. Those who chased the enemy away said, look, well, we drove them away, so we should have a share in it as well. And then uh, there were a group of the Sahaba who stayed and you know, surrounded the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to keep him safe. <coughs> Lest anyone tried to come back and try to assassinate him uh, in a stealthy manner and so they said they have a share in it so there was a bit of a, a dispute and so in a number of them asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the ruling of this and so the surah is called Surah Al-Anfal the excess 
<laughs> spoils of war you could almost say although the, the spoils aren't considered excess in that regard but uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directing the attention of the believers that no the spoils should not be you know the, uh, should not, not be your focus the focus should be Allah and you know defending his religion and establishing the truth that's what it is and anything else beyond that well that's an excess it's great if you get it no problem but it shouldn't be your main goal and that you know he's saying so it's as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I give you the victory you didn't get the victory yourself this is what Imam al-Biqai says now one of the themes is that for the believers to relinquish all claims to power and ability la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah right? Allah is the one who gave them victory we've touched on this in Surah uh, Ali Imran and so even the angels as we see later in the Surah even the presence of the angels that didn't give them victory Allah is the, <laughs> is the one who gave the believers victory <coughs> so so he's saying that you didn't really do you know you, you don't you know you have you're not entitled to them and uh, so then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them said that they belong to Allah and his messenger and then the distribution was done after that uh, by the Prophet so the first half of this surah talks about this talks about you know that victory comes from Allah that's the theme of the first half of the whole surah actually and the second half of the surah focuses on the matters that give people uh, success you know in, in in warfare in these situations where outward material means don't matter we have just without going going too much into the actual um, background of the uh, battle um, the battle of Badr was the first actual major conflict right there was maybe one event before where people got it was actually at Badr and people were going there were uh, there's a few people from Quraysh few from the believers and they were about to fight um, but uh, no blows were actually traded and uh, <clears throat> so this was the first major battle between the truth and the false, uh, falsehood of Quraysh and their idolatry and everything and the truth of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what had been revealed in the Quran to his messenger Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so, <coughs> so being the first conflict it was significant and the Sahaba were outnumbered you know, when, when the messenger of Allah left Medina he was actually, um, the initial plan was to uh, attack a caravan of Abu Sufyan ibn Harith, sorry, Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, um, Abu Sufyan ibn Harb. Uh, he took uh, a number of camels to Syria and uh, to trade and whatever, and he was bringing the, the stock he bought, all the money, everything back. That stuff was, uh, was it, it was Quraysh's stock, but because the believers were you know the, the Quraysh had made it impossible for them to live in Madi in Mecca when the believers left Mecca and went to Medina <coughs> all of their belongings were taken and the houses everything many had to leave many had to flee right you know for their life you know lest the, you know um less Quraysh capture them and kill them so everything that belonged to them was taken so they were given permission fine you know you can uh, you can uh, recuperate your losses you know f f through this way so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told the sahaba whoever's ready uh, let's go and they were expecting a battle so only 300 odd right this is 313 uh, people were ready uh, to leave immediately and they went Quraysh came with a f strong army, full army, thousand plus, with, with horses, with camels, with proper <coughs> armor, <coughs> you know, proper weaponry. And they were battle tested, you know, these people had fought before and they knew how to hold their you know, own in a fight. But yet, despite, you know, this, this disparity in outward means of, of victory, the believers won. And so Allah is saying it's you know he who gave the victory. So <clears throat> let's look at the, the surah. Um and uh, yeah, let me just uh there's those disputes uh which some of the Sahaba had. There's a few others uh, in some of the narrations. Um uh, so like Imam Abu Dawood and uh, Imam al Nasai narrate um from uh, Ibn Abbas that um 
Allah. The Messenger of Allah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever does such and such a thing uh, in, in the battle will get uh, such and such. Right? So many people went to do that, many of the young men. And then afterwards, what happened is, you know, the, the older men were holding the flags. If once your flags, you know, lost, then people tend to, you know, think the battle's over. So they were holding firm. So the young men did a lot of these things that were promised a, a bonus reward. And the older men were their support them and then the young men tried claiming uh, <laughs> the spoils and the older men said well we were supporting you you don't have got it without and there's a number of narrations like this so they kept asking the messenger of Allah uh, about this matter so oh, many people asked so this is what happened so let's look at um, <coughs> this surah as I said this is a it's a Medina surah completely and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yes alunaka anil anfal. Kulil anfalu lillahi wa rasul. they ask you a prophet regarding the spoils of war. Say their distribution is decided by Allah and His Messenger. Fattakullaha wa aslihu data bainikum wa atiullaha wa rasulah in kuntum mu'mineen. And uh, so my, be mindful of Allah and obey Allah and His Messenger. If you are true believers. Okay. So <clears throat> just look at this. Firstly the word anfal is repeated twice. To show that um, it's not just. Uh, th this ruling is not just restricted to this situation. It's the general rule for anfal. Whenever you find anfal. Allah and his messenger. Right. And the ulama differ between. Uh, um, distinguish between this and fate. Fate is so anfal is a spoils that come through fighting, and fate a spoils that come when there's been no fighting, right? And there are situations like that, like when Surah Al Hashr was revealed. Uh, so he says, Yes, alunaka. So this can mean repeatedly, or um, he's been asked by many, many people. They are asking you. <coughs> they are asking you <coughs> for the spoils of war that are taken from. Uh, from uh, sorry, they are asking you about an. Anil Anfal. There is another position, a weaker position, which is really weak, that says that uh, uh, some of the ulama suggested that it means that asking you for the spoils, give us some. But it doesn't mean that, otherwise, the word An would not be used, right? And obviously, the ruling after um, clarifies that they're talking about who gets what, not give us some. <coughs> so, <coughs> yes, Alunaka, many people have asked you, Anil Anfal, these uh, spoils of war, which I said, the root word means it's something excess. Why are you focusing on this? Allah should be your goal, pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, Qulil Anfalu Lillahi wa Rasul. Say, O, mes o Messenger. Say, O Messenger, the Anfal, the spoils, the booty, uh, belong to Allah, they're specifically His and his messengers so they belong to allah <clears throat> allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides and you know what's going to be done to them and or with them and the messenger of allah is his representative sallallahu alayhi wasallam so he does the distribution he can give it you know um, wherever uh, allah tells him to give it so he's saying it doesn't belong to you because the victory wasn't yours; it came from allah so therefore the spoils will also uh, also belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, Fattakullaha, so fear Allah. Why? Because they were the <coughs> the believers started arguing amongst themselves. <coughs> and Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas says that you know some of their uh, some of these people there that you know their their khuluq were very good at that point you know the way they were engaging and dealing with each other wasn't very good it wasn't very polite and and, and right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fear allah you know and fix things be amongst yourselves fix things uh, you know in the way you're dealing with each other uh, so uh, so fear allah and don't argue over these anfal Ultimately, <clears throat> the unity and the bond and the brotherhood that they had 
was more important uh, for them and in the sight of Allah than getting some of these ghanaim. And people slip, you know, people make, uh, you know, the odd mistake. This is why Saad said that, you know, like some of the character wasn't, you know, uh, wasn't good at this point. So Allah is reminding them, be believers and so fear Allah, don't do this. Wa aslihu thata baynikum. So, um, thata the word points to something which is really strong strongly connected to something else so that which has the bane bane means between so it's it's, it's a clumsy tra- uh, rendition but it's saying that which has everything between you mean so it's almost as talking about the space between them right the thing which contains or has or owns the space between them fix that what is between them it's bonds and relationships and ties so the way one person looks at another you know they may may have been fine but then they had this argument and then when people when you argue with someone you know you're upset a little for a little while after and <coughs> and the way you look at them is, is a bit different. Maybe you don't want to sit with them. Maybe you don't want to in, engage with them. So he's saying, fix what's between you. So fear Allah. Don't go down this road any further. And fix what's between you. This relationship that's between you. So <coughs> he said, قُلِ الْأَنْفَالُ لِلَّهِ The spoils belong to Allah, the supreme name, the absolute king. He gets to command where, where they go and so he says Fattakullah, fear Allah same name again remember and this fills the Arabs with awe and you know you know majesty a sense of majesty of God of the majesty of God so the you know they're, they're aware of who they're dealing with then he says wa wa <coughs> and obey Allah once again the supreme king he is commanding you. He is telling you what to do. So obey Allah, obey Him and His Messenger. If He tells you, if you think you're entitled to something, if He says otherwise, it's otherwise. Obey and submit. Obey Allah and obey His Messenger. Right? And so don't try to do anything else and don't think that um, <clears throat> anything else should be the case. And then He says, In kuntum mu'minin, if you really are firm rooted believers if you really are believers it's not necessarily talking if you really are people of strong firm faith right so mu'minin the ism fa'il here it, it talks about someone who's rooted in faith that so but there's a question around this now he's saying if you really are believers who are rooted in their faith then obey Allah and his messenger and if you're not obeying then you don't have this quality of firm faith so it's it's ilhab it's, it's like it's like daring someone in English I dare you to do this so if you really are like we see in Surah Al-Baqarah فَشْكُرُ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ then you know be grateful show, show thanks to Allah if you really are worshipping him alone Right? Show thanks to Allah. So it's like this, be, uh, you know, be, um, have taqwa. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them <coughs> who real, true, firm believers are. If you really are, then you'll have these qualities. Right? إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهَ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانَا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ We're going to see uh, yeah, six qualities here. Right? So here's the first few. The true believers are those whose hearts tremble at the remembrance of Allah, whose faith increases when His revelations are recited to them, and who put their trust in their Lord. So innama, this shows that this is only this, and this is obvious and clear. So it goes with the previous meaning that you know if you're not doing this, if you don't have this, then you know you should work to getting this right, because a true believer is someone like this. And so obey Allah. If you really are believers, uh, and firm believers, obey Allah and His Messenger. You know, you want to know what a firm believer is? Here you are. Clearly, obviously, in the mu'minuna, the firm believers are who. Alladina uh, also indicates that this is clear from them. It's like, like the well-known quality of theirs. Alladina ida dhukir Allahu are those when Allah, the supreme ultimate King, is is mentioned, and the ulama say when he's described in a way that tells us about his majesty, his greatness, his perfection, his authority, 
and you know his power what happens their hearts are filled with awe and reverence and fear of him so the word <clears throat> Wajil at Wajal is this intense fear and awe and it can also contain this meaning of real like worry and you know like we're intensely worried about excuse me about a matter and all of these meanings are combined is this the case with the believers in every situation no uh, because the context here <clears throat> this is only when uh, you know the, quite frankly the, the scary attributes of God those, those that should make us scared of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and you know he can punish anyone and look at the punishments he's got waiting for the people of the hellfire and you know he has absolute authority he's a supreme king you know, makes you wonder right it makes you it makes you think twice when you know you know about the you know the supreme power and authority of God uh, and there are other situations where he's so this is what um, this is what happens to the firm believers you know where when there's something they should be doing uh, otherwise right people make mistakes people make you know have sins so in this situation when they're doing something wrong they remember Allah even though you know they're believers because it's 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 a road of progression and there's some progression maybe some regression progress regress progress regress you know and, but there's a gradual increase and so they make tawbah when they make mistakes and these sorts of things but when they remember the punishment of allah the absolute authority and supremacy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they're filled with awe and then you have other contexts like in surah al-ra'ad where he says uh, um that with the remembrance of allah uh, uh, hearts find absolute tranquility and that's where his mercy and forgiveness and generosity and greatness and perfection and beauty all of that is remembered that's when the tranquility enters their house so there's the situation of rahba you know uh, deterrence you know where they remember you know the the majestic nature of god and and then there's the situation of uh <clears throat> rahba with desire and enticement you know where yeah, they, they hear of the the qualities of Allah that people you know yearn for like you know his mercy and his love and his you know his grace <coughs> <coughs> all of these things <coughs> then make them uh, feel tranquility and was it in Surah Zumar where both are mentioned right and so this is uh, what it is he says tuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadathum imana and when his signs or his verses here uh, are recited to them they increase these people in iman so without going too deep into it there's a difference amongst the theologians um, the majority of the scholars of islam as imam alusi mentions uh, they say that uh, one's iman increases and decreases and that's the pos position of the ash'ari it's the majority position in the ummah the scholars of the Ummah uh, and most of the verses of, uh, of the Quran indicate this Imam Abu Hanifa and a number of his students and others uh, <clears throat> say look Iman doesn't increase and decrease but rather what increases is a person's taqwa the ability to do good and avoid bad that can increase and that can decrease and so what does this verse mean then that when their signs when his verses are related to them it increases them in, in iman <clears throat> they say when what they say what this means is that when new verses are revealed revealed to them they increase in the things that they believe in allah has told you to believe this they say ya rab we're ready we're here we believe in this as well that it's come from you it's all true right strong position but the former is stronger uh, because the, the wording is literally this that when the verses of god not necessarily the new ones when the verses of god are recited to them um, it increases them in faith so there are some of the ulama like imam al-razi he said that both positions are actually the same thing right and he has he said it's just a semantic difference but uh, the strongest position that no it's literally um, uh, an increase and decrease of Iman. Even if you say Iman is, um, well, what they say Iman is tasdiq, with, uh, is an affirmation of the heart that this is true, I submit to it. And that changes, that varies because, you know, you can believe something, yeah, that's true. But then when you've seen evidence, evidence of it 10, 20, 30 times, your conviction in it is a lot stronger than, you know, the, the first time you hear about it. And you say, yeah, I, I could believe that. Yeah, I believe that. 
But you know, like someone, you know, uh, telling you about something about someone you know, and you think, yeah, I, I, yeah, I can see that person doing this. Okay, I believe you. But then, when you've gone and seen it yourself and repeatedly, your your conviction is stronger. So that's what they're saying. And uh, <clears throat> so, what, what happens to these believers in the context of when they're reminded of you know the, the rigor and the majesty of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Their hearts are filled with awe and fear. And when his verses are recited to them, they increase these people in faith. It rejuvenates them and refreshes them, and they they, <clears throat> they affirm the truth of these verses, and you know they benefit from them, right? They increase them in faith, so they're able to face the challenges that come to them. Uh, وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And these people in their Lord. Place their full trust. So tawakkul from tawkil, which is where you choose Allah to take care of your affair for you, right? And so it's it, tawakkul entails taking all the means, everything you need to have in place for it, for the project to succeed. And then once you've done that, ignoring all the means and trusting in Allah. Only Allah can make it a success. So like that. And that's what they do. This is the the quality of firm believers. When they're reminded of God, their hearts are affected, either with um, <clears throat> fear and reverence in in those contexts, or with tranquility and and love and joy in, in the other contexts of uh, His mercy. And when Allah's verses are, are recited to them, they were affected, and it strengthened and increased their iman. And uh, and they they place their full trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Then he says, "Alladina yuqimun al-salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun." Those who establish the prayer and donate from what we have provided them. Those once again, alladina. So the firm believers are those who do this, 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 and this. So more emphasis on this and you know uh, further highlights the matter yuqimun as-salat iqamatu as-salat is to pray properly with sincerity on time and with all of the conditions and the integrals and everything present and, and fine so it's almost like you're saying i like to translate it as um, those who perfect the prayer those who perfect, perfect their prayers right all of the prayers on time everything the prayer is not perfect if it's not done on time. The prayer is not perfect if it's not sincere. The prayer is not perfect if it's not done in according to the teachings of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then he says, "Wa mimma razaqnahum," and from some of what we have provided them, yunfiqun, right? And what, some of what we regularly, consistently provide them, they repeatedly spend. They spend in the way of Allah. They spend, you know, to help the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or they spend to help someone who's poor, or they spend on their families, or they they're spending from the things that Allah has provided them uh, in the, in the avenues that Allah loves and that Allah would be pleased. Helping someone who's poor, helping someone who's needy, they do this. So this is the five qualities so far uh, of the. These people who are <clears throat> are true firm believers. All of this is an encouragement for Allah, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to us. Be like this. Take on these qualities and be like this, right? <clears throat> and then he says, "Ulaika, uh, humul mu'minuna haqqa," right? "Lahum darajatun 'inda Rabbihim wa maghfiratun wa rizqun karim." It is they who are the true believers. They will have elevated ranks, forgiveness, and an honourable provision from their Lord. These are the people whom so ulaika those people who do who when you say ulaika you bear in mind all of the previously mentioned qualities. You also bear in mind that these people are known for them and they're distinct uh, from others because of these qualities. <coughs> and then he points to them whom <coughs> that. This is for Hasr. They alone are the true firm <coughs> believers. Hakka. It's like you're saying, I affirm this with a true affirmation, right? Hakka. Right. So they, these people have realized the you know the, the deepest realities of faith, and you know they, they've affected them to the core of their beings. We have one example of this. Let me <coughs> give an example. 
uh, one of the Sahaba, right? This is narrated by Imam Al Tabarani. Some of the ulama have said this is a Hassan hadith, but regardless, you know, we can uh, look at the bene- look at this hadith for the, for this benefit that's being mentioned. So uh, there was a, a young Sahabi called Al Harith ibn Malik, right? Al Ansari, <coughs> and I believe he was asleep in the mosque. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam woke him up uh, after sunrise, and uh, so it's Harith, or in some of the uh, had narrations Haritha. But anyway, he said, "Kaifa asbahta ya Harith? Harith, how are you this morning?" Uh, and the uh, the Sahabi said, "Asbahtu mu'minan haqqan. Um, this morning I'm a true, firm believer. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Unzur ma taqul, watch what you're saying. Fa inna li kulli shay'in haqiqatun. Fa ma haqiqatu imanik. Watch what you're saying, or you know, look at what you're saying. Everything has a reality. Of like, you know, what's there to show? What's, everything has something that proves it. Uh, what's the reality of your faith, you know? <coughs> he said, so Harith said, Azafat nafsi anid dunya. My my soul is like it's it's unattached to this to this life right it's, it's not uh, it doesn't mean there's no vibrance in his life or whatever but it, it, it's not the focus and the goal of his existence rather the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what has he done because of that for us her to layli he said i've made my night stay awake eloquent way of saying um uh, I stay awake all night, i.e. in the prayer. وَأَضْمَأْتُ uh, نَهَارِي And I've made my daytime thirst, <laughs> meaning he fasts in the day. وَكَأَنِّي أَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ عَرْشِ رَبِّي بَارِزًا It's as though I can see the throne of my Lord there just clear, right in front of me. وَكَأَنِّي أَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِ جَنَّةِ يَتَزَاوَرُونَ فِيهَا It's as though I can see the people of paradise visiting each other. Events of the future um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this certainty where he was able to see things, right? And وَكَأَنِّي أَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِ النَّارِ يَتَضَاغُونَ فِيهَا It's as though I can see the people of hell, you know, screaming uh, in it. So when the Messenger of Allah heard this, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the proof of Haritha, Haritha's Iman. So he said, Ya Harith, or in other words, Ya Haritha, Haritha, Arafta falzam, you know, so hold on to it. You know, so hold on to it. You know, so hold on to it. Uh, three, or oh, he, he, he might have said, Ya Harith, Araf Tafalzam, Ya Harith, Araf Tafalzam, Ya Harith, Araf Tafalzam. Um, in this narration, he said it three times. So this is a famous term now, Araf Tafalzam. And so this is, you know, those of true firm faith and those who are always confident in the promise of Allah and, you know, who, like Sayyidina Abu Bakr, a siddiq radiallahu anhu, you know, just was never, you know, shaken, never swayed, just firm, always there supporting the Messenger of Allah. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so so far Allah has mentioned three types of worship, right? One, worship of the heart which is uh, their Iman, right? <clears throat> this is uh, uh, what the, the great, amazing Andalusian Mufassir Abu Hayyan said that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions three types of worships for them. Those of the heart, which is the fear and the increase of the Iman and the tawakkul. All these actions are done in, in, by the heart. So their worships of, of, of the body, you could say. And then, uh, so sorry, of the heart. And then he mentioned physical worship, you know, we, those who perfect the prayer. And then he mentioned financial worship and those who keep spending from what Allah has given. So as a reward for this, Allah mentions, لَهُمْ uh, دَرَجَاتٌ They will high, lofty, amazing uh, ranks they'll have. This is for the works of their heart, the tawakkul and the fear of Allah. Um, <clears throat> And uh, the increase of the iman when they hear the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, the, the physical worship the, um, is rewarded by maghfira, forgiveness, because their hands and their deeds and their bodies, you know, they, commit, they, they do good actions and they may you know, commit some wrong actions. So the forgiveness is there to wipe that away, Why wipe away all of the, the, the sins uh, from the, that the bodies have done. وَرِزْقٌ karim And from the rizq of Allah that He gives them, they spend, so He's going to give them rizq, perpetual prov- provision uh, from their Lord. Kareem, um, <clears throat> this word can be used to refer to the best of something. 
So Al Quran al Karim, the best recital. So Rizqun Karim, this provision that keep, comes regularly again and again, indefinite. Rizqun, and also the word Karim, the adjective is also indefinite. It's huge, it's amazing. All of this is going to come to them. They're going to have this, and it's going to be the very best, and it's going to be perpetual, constant, uh, should they wish, but it'll be perpetual. Uh, and this is their reward. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So that's the thing that, you know, be believers, be firm believers, and be firm in your belief and your confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will give these firm rewards, these amazing rewards. Okay, let's stop here and we'll continue from this point, inshaAllah. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allah bless you all.